I think my dream right now is, um, there, there's so many dreams. <laughs> kind of stresses me out a little bit. I mean, what dream do you want? The selfish one or the non-selfish one? The selfish one is always me proving to myself that I can do more. Like, I, I seriously believe, I'm like, fuck this. Like, there's got to be more. I can do more. I can push more. And I think, like, for me, I love showing people what's possible. Like, I love doing that. It's, I don't know why, but I think it brings me so much happiness when someone goes, this is impossible, Jai. And I'm like, watch it become possible. My unselfish dream is like, I love to share that with other people so they can do it as well. And that's why like I do all my education and stuff because the more people that I can show, it almost feels like you're, you're taking off the shackles for them, freeing them from their own limiting beliefs and their own self doubts and their own, you know, lack of courage or lack of um, confidence or whatever it is from, from their whole life, however they got taught, you know, whatever experiences that they had. And it's like, don't worry about yesterday. We've got a task in front of us tomorrow and this is what we're going to do. And I think for me, yeah, the unselfish goal is like, the more people that I can help change their lives like that, I mean, it's still selfish, because I'm the one that benefits the most. You know, it makes me happy. My name is Jai Long, and I am a business coach for photographers based here in Melbourne, Australia. My name is Megan Brown. I am a Melbourne wedding photographer. I grew up in Perth and I've been doing weddings for on and off for two years. <laughs> Before I even delved into photography, I've been following wedding photographers who are traveling, um, living in Perth, but they're, they're constantly on the move. And I was like, man, that lifestyle looks so good. I would love that for myself. So even if I could just say I've shot one, just one wedding internationally, that would be the ultimate. The ultimate. Because that, that for me is like, I've reached my goal. You know, like I, I've come from this like, little Perth girl who thought, oh, that looks kind of fun, to actually like doing it and living the dream. <laughs> so, that'll be unreal. I love your idea and I love your yeah. goal and I want to help you make it happen. I think it'd be really cool if I get you a ticket to Queenstown, yeah. I come with you yes. and then we go around, we'll organise a shoot, meet the people, so I will go to the door with you, but you got to knock on it. The car is stuck in a ditch. Imagine if you just got a lead or inquiry and someone said that they want you to shoot their wedding and they're going to pay for your travel. Yeah, huge. That's the dream. And so the dream for me is to, you know, make this happen um, as fast as possible. It's interesting that I think a lot of people don't know what it feels like to chase a dream. I've always been taught that you can do anything. So it's been ingrained in me that you can always have a dream, you can dream big, and you can always chase them. When you can be creative and you can imagine what something's like, like a big goal, as big as you want because it's your imagination, and then you can live it and breathe it and feel it before it even happens. I think it's it's kind of like a fantasy world sometimes, you know, they always say like dreamers make sure you put your feet back on the ground because you're always out there and I think for me it's like well if I'm dreaming I might as well be unrealistic because I can, can be out there and I can create my own reality.
All right, so when you want to book like an overseas wedding, like what do you think the steps would be? Or what are your steps? Are you doing something towards it right now? No, so I haven't made any action yet. So right now it's like you've got the got dream the and the goal and the idea yeah. and now you're like, okay, I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah, I've got a few ideas. Yeah, how, give them to me. How I might do it. Yeah. I could contact someone who is a wedding photographer. Contact, um, yeah. And ask to second shoot. Second thing would be to contact other like stylists, florists and, and organize. Yeah, vendors. Um, what else could I do? I could run some kind of giveaway. I think they're really good. Um, you know, when I first started, um, my first weddings were all overseas because I wanted to be a destination wedding photographer. So I was like, okay. I sold the car, I bought some tickets and then I went over and I just told people I'm going to shoot weddings for free and I shot about eight weddings. And I was so ambitious that like if someone got in touch and they said, oh, we'd love you to shoot our wedding, but unfortunately our wedding's in Chicago, mm -hmm. I would reply with, oh, the good news is I'm actually going to be in Chicago oh. that weekend. And that's basically what chewed up all my money, but it made a really cool portfolio and it worked really well. What's the clearest way to go from A to B? So B is you want to have work that you can showcase when someone contacts you and says, hey, are you a destination photographer? Yeah. And then that, that's it all right there. Yeah. The way my brain works is like, you need to be at the destination. Like, why would I be stuck in this studio here in Melbourne if my yeah. goal is to shoot a wedding in Queenstown? Yeah. So my train of thought is I'll do all the things I just talked about. I'll buy a ticket, fly and myself there, there, and then I'll walk around and see who I need to meet. Yeah. How soon are we going? Um, we can go tonight, today. <laughs> I mean, the dream is to get to New Zealand, shoot some content, make some stuff, make some new connections, and hopefully book a lead or get something yeah. happening. Cool. Um, because, you know, like when someone books a wedding, it's usually a year away. Yeah. But I mean, imagine if you just got a lead or inquiry and someone said that they want you to shoot their wedding and they're going to pay for your travel. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. If it doesn't happen, I'll have to get married again. Quick! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Make a wedding. <laughs> April is pretty jam-packed. Yeah. May, I have heaps of availability. Yeah, we could do those dates. It looks like they're available. Which will give us one full day there, basically because you leave here and it, yeah, so the first day you one leave day. here. Yeah, that's only one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, one day. Can we do two? <laughs> well, actually, that's a day and a half. Should I do it, Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just see. Reject your offer. Dang it. I'm nervous. Why? Because it's thinking. It's actually done now. Holy shit, all right, no turning back. Yeah, I've got tickets that you can't refund as well. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm in this very privileged situation where I get to work with thousands of wedding photographers. And I get to hear everyone's dreams, their hopes and dreams and their failures and everything in between. And I think the biggest shame is never the failures because they're always like, man, someone's given it a go and, and you know, it makes me happy that that's happening. But it's when someone doesn't even give it a go doesn't even get to that point, to allow themselves to fail, you know. And then it's just more dreams forgotten. So yeah, with Megan, I, I did think like, imagine if we could show her her potential. Like, I mean, it's not me showing her potential, her unlocking her own potential, right? Just by being, being a support, being a rock in the background. So even if I didn't even do anything, just so she felt safe enough to push out into the deep end of the pool, you know, so just get, in, get into the deep end and try something that's a little bit more unrealistic for her. When she talks about it, it's like, this is unrealistic, I can't believe it. And when I'm looking at it, because I think so different and I see it over and over, I'm like, no, it's not. It's not unrealistic, you know, it's, it's, it has always been this easy. She is the perfect, um, the perfect superhero to show hope of like, hey, we we can do this, we can chase things, and we can make things happen, and we can blow our own minds. And I just know right now in the community, like people need to see that more than anything else, more than any education or any book or anything else. They just need to see that we can do it.
Okay, heading to Megan's house right now. I'm excited to see what she's been up to and get all the updates. Hey. So, this last week I know you haven't been sleeping. I know you've been getting a lot of work done. Can you sort of give me a recap of what you've been doing this last week? Yeah. Initially, when we first started chatting, we spoke about just doing an elopement shoot, which mm -hmm. was the helicopter on the mountains with one couple. Yeah. So, I've reached out to Kate from the business map, and she's really keen to model. So, she'll be modeling with her hubby, Hamish. Oh, I've been firing off emails left, right and centre mm -hmm. to a whole bunch of suppliers. I've got a florist who I've been chatting with, Hera Couture, they're supplying a dress, veil, earrings, got a hairstylist locked in, makeup's locked in, florist is locked in, what else did I say? Oh god, actually there's a lot to work out still. What are you doing here talking to me? I know! <laughs> <laughs> I shot my first wedding in 2018 and it was, I kind of fell into it because a friend of mine um, was going to a wedding and he was like, my friend's getting married but their photographer has broken their arm and I know you do photography, I know you don't do weddings but like, do you want to give it a go? And I was like, cool, <laughs> no worries, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I remember jumping onto Google and YouTube and I was YouTubing like, where to stand during a ceremony, where to stand when they're doing their vows, where to stand when they like when they have their first kiss and like what usually happens during a wedding because I was like, I can't remember the last time I went to a wedding. I don't know what the hell goes on. <laughs> have you been getting lots yeah. of yeses or have you been getting rejections as well? No, I've been getting lots of yeses. I've had two no's, but that's only because um, because of timing. It's, it's just bad. too tight. So yeah. people are really excited um, and I feel like the energy that I'm putting into it, they're picking it up and being like, yes, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and I know that you have just, not randomly, but you have uh, added a whole nother shoot to the day that we're shooting. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> just to make it extra hard. <laughs> why not? We're going to be tight on time, aren't we? We're going to yeah. be like really like squeeze and stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> because really, you got two epic shoots that really would want a day each. Oh, easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Easy. I yeah. could spend a whole day on one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course you could book a destination wedding if you had all the time in the world and everything, but we do yeah. only have a few weeks, a couple weeks. <laughs> I believe you're going to book work. Like, there's no doubts in my mind that you're oh. not going to book a job overseas by the end of this month. Oh, Jai. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> that is a massive call. Well, it's always one day I'm going to be a destination wedding photographer. But right yeah. now we got, what, 86,400 seconds per day. Yeah. And it's like, I why isn't this happening right now? A lot of us, like, we've already hit goals and we've already reached some level of success, like, wherever it is but we stand to lose something now and that's more uncomfortable than it is to actually gain that next level of success or that next level of self or whatever it is. And it keeps us playing really small because if you're always trying to protect the downside, you miss out on losing the biggest thing, which is the upside. Like the thing that you don't even know that exists or that it could happen for you. So I see it all the time and I think, I think it's one of the biggest shames like for most people in the world is they are always protecting the downside, you know, and and they allow themselves to get complacent and lose their potential, basically. Yeah, I feel like <clears throat> today was pretty good. <laughs> It's not about maximizing the time, it's about getting you the best portfolio possible. Because I know in times like this, like we got to understand when we work for free for people, which is uh, like, it's amazing that we get to shoot for these vendors and everything. Um, but the problem is you're going to create less work for you. Yeah. So we need to make sure in between everything that we're going to create as much work as we can. For yeah. Like honestly, to be a good photographer, is to have the confidence to be able to say, I need to take a photo again. I'm gonna write some stuff down here, but okay. I've gotta say I don't envy you for tomorrow because you've got <laughs> a lot of stuff on. 
and it's going to be a big day. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to get through. Um, there's a lot to get done and a lot of stuff in between that I want to get done as well, but there's not that much time. <laughs> we got to wake up in like, what, three hours? Get out. <laughs> I think your perfect clients are waiting to see this stuff, you know? They're waiting. They're out They're there. waiting. You're just not doing your job by showing the world They're how amazing you are. So oh. We just need to do that. That's what we're going to do. I think like, that's the most important thing. Yeah, just have fun honestly, while we're doing yeah. it. Because if you're not doing it for fun, then yeah. why are you doing it? But we do it. Why do we do it? We do it because we're fucking crazy, or is it because we love it, or is it because we fool ourselves? Passionate. It's because we're passionate about it, and it doesn't feel like work to us. Why do we do it because we're passionate about it? That doesn't make any sense. I'm always like, why was I so compelled to push myself out of my comfort zone? I yeah. could have been at home, like I'm on the, you know, another yeah. country. I'm doing all these things. Why was I so compelled? And then I start having a little bit of doubt of like, is it actually worth it? I've yeah. always think that. I'm like, is this actually worth it? The amount of money, time, yeah. stress, like yeah. all the things on my schedule that doesn't work with this right now. Yeah. And then afterwards, I'm always like, yeah, that was worth it. I feel like it always pays off though. And so you're always in this, or well, for me anyway, yeah. oh, I've got this idea that I want to do. Okay, I'm going to do it. And then we drive ourselves crazy making that happen. Mm. And then the thing happens. And then afterwards you reflect on it and you're like, that was actually worth it. Yeah. That was cool. I had some fun, got some good things out of it, did some great stuff. Now what else can we do? Unfortunately, and it's like a good thing and a bad thing, but I feel like I'm responsible for more people quitting their jobs than anyone else on the planet. And it feels like a bad thing, but also it feels like a good thing because I say it from the heart, I'm like, yeah, if I was in your position, if you just ask them for my opinion of what I would do, I would definitely fucking quit. And I would definitely chase the thing. I mean, what have you got to lose? What are you standing to lose? And if they tell me what they're standing to lose, I'm like, you're concentrating too much on what you've got to lose. Because, you know, you've got to start working on what you have to gain. There's never been a time that someone's ever wrote to me and said, Jai, I regret chasing my dream. Jai, I regret taking your advice. Jai, I should have kept it safe. I should have played some. I wish I did. Never heard. Okay, um, so the car is stuck in a ditch. give it a crack, I'm going all in. So people think like, oh, she knows what she's doing. And sometimes I do, a lot of the time I do, but a lot of the time I'm just learning and I'm testing the waters and I'm trying new things. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so, 
I'm so stressed because I'm thinking about all the shots that I wanted to get and I really hope I got them. <laughs> it's a wrap but I don't want it to be a wrap, you know? Like I don't want to leave. Can you feel how stressed I am? I'm you like, I go in, yeah, I go in <laughs> real serious kind of scattery mode. When the car got in the ditch, I was like, fuck, this is, this is it, we're going to shoot here. The car uh -huh. couldn't start. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was just trying to trouble through, like trouble shoot everything in my head. Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> so sick. Did we just enter Jurassic Park here? I know, or? right? <laughs> so I might as well just park here? Yeah. Uh, we're going to iCarts at the moment, iCarts Hotel, and I've just looked up. They're actually featured on the lane, so they're a, they're a luxury private hotel and we've got a couple of looks to get through but we're gonna pull up the Mustang out the front get the floral set again so that we can tell that same story but you don't have permission yet hey. we don't have permission yet yeah shit <laughs> so, you should also ask if they've got a wedding planner here and then if they mm. do we can go in and get uncomfortable and just be like hey is there anything that you need yeah any photos or anything we've got everyone here whole team and everything yeah even in the venue yeah get the girls in the venue yeah get them yeah. get them to know you yeah this is if this is one of the main places in Queenstown. Yeah. And if they got high paying clients, this is where you want to be. Yeah. All right, let's, let's do it. it. Yeah. The crazy thing is, it wasn't just like pressure because of the documentary or anything. The pressure was actually real. Like, just to put you in her shoes, like she did have the head of Together Journal, like magazine, there right next to her the whole time. She was shooting an editorial. This is the first time she's ever shot an editorial. This is the first time she shot overseas or anything else and then she had back-to-back -back shoots locations people and there was a lot of people putting in a lot of time and effort for free as well and she actually had a lot of pressure on the day hey we are here from Melbourne yeah. and we're doing a little photo shoot with Together Journal and um, we're wondering if we can shoot out the front yeah, yeah, the shot. We're doing a shoot around the Queenstown area and we just thought on the off chance we'd see if we could get a few shots outside iCarts with a beautiful white car. So we thought we'd just come oh, yeah. in and ask and beautiful. see. Yeah, so, so basically, yeah, you know, that's no right. Okay? Yeah. Of course do, it do you is. know so, who's in the Mercedes? It's so powerful when you realise that the community is bigger than yourself. And there's so much out there. There's so many connections. We don't need to be alone and we don't need to feel overwhelmed. You know, there's so much help. And so when you see that, like, really, if you actually watch everything that happened in, in Queenstown, was it about the Melissa girl? Yeah. Of course. But really, it was about people coming together and working together. That's fucking insane. You know, the amount of hands that came together and people willing to help someone else achieve a dream, that's incredible. <laughs> Real cool. I think um, Megan went down and hustled and got um, just said hello to to this place, which actually have weddings here. And then all of a sudden they're like, "Come on to the penthouse, take some photos." There's no one here, and so we've just walked up, grabbed some flowers and everything, got the models up here. Now all this is happening, which is this is a really amazing thing. This is actually probably the most amazing part of the whole thing because she will actually be able to give the photos to this venue, and then she will get featured. You know? So I think this is like a really good connection for her. And the fact that she didn't even organise this, it just happened. It's pretty, it's pretty insane. Like one that oh, just Yeah. Alright, take Yeah, one. okay. That's way more genius than going back there and back there. Yeah, okay. Cool, and cool, then that cool. way we can have a drink of water, relax. Cool. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Did the helicopter company write back to you? Um, and confirm what time we have to be there? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to check my emails. Okay, so we don't have long. Woo! It's tight! It's tight! <laughs> you living the dream, mate? I'm living the dream, mate. Are you? Oh. Like there is a lot of pressure because there's a lot of people, how many, 950 something in the business map? 
There's a lot of people with a lot of talent, with a lot of drive and a lot of big dreams as well, just like me. Different dreams, but or maybe the same. I want to make the most of this opportunity because it's, it's huge. Um, it's exciting. It's like, yeah, it's a dream. I don't want to have this amazing opportunity come my way and then I just slack off and then it, the day comes and goes and then we're back to reality again. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm staying up every single second that I can to make the most of this, to, to bring out as much as possible. There's so much power in just taking one step and then another step. And it's the only way I've built my whole career. Every day, another step. It's all it takes. Because after a while, you'll look back and go, shit, I've actually done a lot. I've actually hit those unrealistic goals, you know? When you can just get to work, that's all you need to do. You just get to work and things are going to happen for you. I feel like it is a once yeah, in a lifetime that you get to be here and then when you doing that. Like, then it's, uh, oh, makes, oh, it makes oh, all the stress, oh, and all the admin, and all the sleepless nights, and all the anxiety, oh, all the things we go through, it makes it all <laughs> worth it. Yeah, I, th I, think she's not, I think she's not a shoe in I think she's the real deal. And I think she's um, got a big career in front of her, for sure. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good, what's happening? Uh, I've got some news for you. Oh yeah? I've been waiting. <laughs> hey? I've been waiting for the, for some news. Uh, I've, got, I've got some really good news. So, okay. Um, I've got some leads for an international wedding. Really? I've got, yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> I've got one for Greece. Uh, I've got a lead for New Zealand. And then I've also just locked in my first international wedding in Bali. It's unreal. <laughs> Bali, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I was so stoked. And then, um, wow. also, I got an email from Greta from Together Journal. Yeah. And um, she said she's going to run like a full page spread of all my photos from the New Zealand shoot. That That's we just unreal. Did. Yeah, so. Awesome. Are you pumped or what? Oh, I'm pumped. I'm, I actually, I can't really believe that it's happened so quickly, to be honest. I know, it's amazing. You made it happen, Megan. You made it happen. It's oh, incredible. It wasn't just me. I, I don't know what could be so long, but, you know, I really needed that push um, to, to go to New Zealand. So, without your help, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been here. So, That's thank all, you. Of course. It's all happened now. I'm just so stoked to see that everything's come together for you so quickly. It's amazing. Yeah, it's happened really quickly. You've inspired me to get out there and go do some stuff. Maybe not today, I'm feeling pretty tired right now, but I'm, I'm going to be ready tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's unreal. Yeah. Three leads and a booking within, what, just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Amazing. All that hard work, huh? All that hard work. So good, I'm so proud of you. Yeah.
so good. Go to New Zealand, get myself out of that comfort zone. Of course. And palms, I can't wait to see where everything takes you. Thanks, thanks, Dad. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go because I gotta go and do some hustle myself, but I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Megan. Bye. biggest wedding photography package I never even had. And you know what, I actually smashed that goal and hit 250k, so I think I did pretty well. Being able to hire my husband full time, he was able to quit a job that he absolutely hated and come and work, you know, he's nurse, as um, I absolutely can't wait to face it all, head on and crush my goals, so. All these people were in law school, were people with doctors, and I'm so embarrassed. I would, I would always hide, I would, I never wanted to see anyone. And now those people, they're, they're hiring, they're hiring me to photograph their wedding, and it's, um, it's insane. Give more, love more, uh, eat more good food, drink good coffee, great wine, and all that sort of thing, so that's my goals.